Theaters are back. And so your film flam host, the J.D. Richard, is back. Let's talk new movies, folks. And go. renowned and long-lasting name in action film let alone film history i'm not sure i mean we're going on 70 years of bond more than 70 i'm sure somebody can correct me on it starting with dr no goldfinger moving right through sean connery to roger moore to whoever that guy was as on her majesty's secret service timothy dalton sean connery returning somewhere in there way too old pierce brosnan one of my favorites um into the daniel craig era so if anybody doesn't know uh bond is your ultimate uh, ultimate dude really he's out there he's taking care of bad guys ruthlessly uh, he's whining and dining evil women are falling for him good women are falling for him um, he's figuring out plots he's got more brains he's got enough brawn he's holding it down out there with all kinds of fun gadgets exploding watches exploding cars um, and as the series has kind of progressed through each decade it's kind of reflected that decade's sensibilities are fun you know from kind of the stark uh, violent natures frankly of the 60s um, into the fun, funky, completely over-the-top Roger Moore, except for a couple of entries in there. Um, Pierce Brosnan bringing the uh, the swagger back and the slick tear and the dodging a bullet just by cranking his head to the side and Goldeneye had happened. Um, to the Daniel Craig era, which has been way more um, realistic and gritty and kind of a reflection of our action movies these days. And there's two sides to the conversation about who your favorite Bond is or the new Bond films, and they essentially go like this. The new Bond isn't a Bond, man. The real Bond was supposed to be cheesy and over the top and fun and had all these cool gadgets in it. No, man, that Bond is dead. There's no place for that Bond in today's cinematic universe. We need a real Bond, a gritty Bond, a manly, action, emotional, crazy feeling, Oscar worthy Bond. But you can't deny one thing. The Daniel Craig films have been the most successful of the whole series. So let's get into this. No Time to Die, the new James Bond film. Um, is it any good? So first of all, hell yeah it is. Um, I'm not going to say Daniel Craig is my favorite Bond. Um, if I'm going to be honest, I'm going to say something probably a little controversial. But uh, it goes back to Dark Knight for me. Everybody's like, the best Batman movies ever. And I always say... Are they Batman movies? Or are they really, really, really good crime movies that have some dudes in costumes? It's kind of the latter, you know? Batman has certain things about it that make it comic booky and over the top and all that sort of stuff. And Dark Knight tried to really streamline it and make it believable and something that a lot of people could uh, could access. And there's nothing wrong with that. But do I love the over the top, cheesy awesomeness of the original Batman and Michael Keaton films? Hell yeah. Is that still my favorite Batman movie? Yeah. Um, it's kind of the same way with these Bond films. I love them. I think they're some of the greatest action films, period, ever, and definitely of our generation. Skyfall ranks as one of the all-time greats. Spectre, the one that followed it, another really good movie, but it kind of it only really suffered that Skyfall came before it. So here we are at the fifth film, the last one with Daniel, Daniel Craig. Uh, they got a few plot lines to wrap up. They got a lot going on. Um, essentially... There are supervillains moving behind the scenes. Spectre's still involved. People that are trying to, uh, they even joke about it at one point. People are trying to mess with freedom, take over the world, probably going to kill a lot of people, that kind of thing. That is exactly what's going to happen. This isn't really about the villains here. They, they are here. But this is more about Bond and Daniel Craig's Bond and, and what he's evolved in throughout the series. So he's flanked by some truly awesome women in this movie too. Um, let me just get their names right quick because I will mess them up. Anna de Amas who is ridiculously attractive and badass as hell in this movie. Not gonna lie, I did not know she had that in her. I've seen her in a few films, um, kind of like Jessica Biel in Blade 3, where I was like, oh, this girl can like throw down. Uh, she plays Paloma, uh, an agent in Cuba. I would love, straight up love to see a spinoff film with her in it. That character is just a blast. I want to know how she got there, what she does in her spare time. Um, we have Leah Sado, who is from the previous film, uh, the main love interest for Bomb as Madeline. Um, she is amazing in this film, beautiful. There's a wide emotional spectrum. Um, Lashana Lynch is uh, Naomi. She's kind of the, I guess, 
I don't want to say she's the Bond's replacement at the agency. He's been gone. She's grown into the role as as this 007. She's actually really good in the movie. The back and forth between her and Bond, um, she kind of plays the younger agent who's obviously got a lot to prove, badass in her own right. And as they kind of grow to respect and appreciate who each other is, it's actually a really cool part of the film. The action scenes in this, oh my goodness. Um, the director behind the original season of True Detective handles this right here. And it's unreal. I mean, the opening sequence, I think it's like 30 minutes long. It is phenomenal. Uh, the sound in this film, oh, just rock in the theater. There are large parts of this movie. I mean, you're talking a two hour and 43 minute movie. Um, there are large portions of this movie that are dedicated to kind of just the emotions and the characters. And if you just want like boom, 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 John Wick style where you killed my puppy and I'm going to kill 214 people in 213 minutes. Um, this might not appeal to you. And I'm not saying that as a bad thing because, man, there's enough different types of action films for everybody. For, for me, this was a wonderful combination. It's something only these newer Bond films have really delivered, to me anyway, which is massive, over-the-top, popcorn-chomping action with, oh my goodness, there's some real heart in here and some really brilliant writing, despite the one line in, in the first Daniel Craig Bond film, the uh, Casino Royale, that... If all that was left of you was your pinky finger, you'd still be more man than any man. And that's one of the worst lines in movie history. But aside from that, they've been amazing. Um, someone out there is going to say Quantum of Solace. I know, Writer's Strike, but it's still a fun movie. Probably one of my favorite villains, actually. Um, but this film, the villains are in it. And Rami Malek of uh, M Mr. Robot, yeah, Mr. Robot fame, it, uh, plays the main villain. Um, I'm not even sure what his name was. Woman. Oh, man. I'm going to butcher this name. They said it. Uh, pfft, we're just going to give it a go. Lutzatsifer Safin. I'm just going to say Lucifer Safin. Something like that. Um, he's got some interesting motivations. And he does the best he can with the time he's got. But this is really about Bond um, and who Bond's become. The end of this film is really going to divide, I think, film fans. But Bond fans as well. Because, like I said, the Bond community has embraced Daniel Craig. And there's obviously tons of Bond fans. And there's tons of people that Bond is, or Daniel Craig is Bond to them. They don't go back and revisit the other ones. But for decades of people that are fans of this character, I think this film, they're going to struggle a bit with it. Because for myself, I walked out going, hell yeah, that is the way to wrap up the Daniel Craig era. I love that they stuck with their guns. They still brought in some of those touches to the past with gadgets and some of the overtop natures and some of the humor in this film oh the humor parts were awesome because they just relieved that tension uh the characters were great some of the callbacks to his old friends through the films and stuff were all great i walked out of there going hell yeah bring on the next bond like i am ready for a new bond i'm ready for a new style of action film but i think there's gonna be people that walk out of this and go how dare you like Maybe this Bond gets a little too emotional. Maybe this Bond has some real moments in this, but that's the Daniel Craig Bond. I mean, if you go back to Sean Connery, like no one could Sean Connery, Sean Connery. He was that Bond. And Daniel Craig is this Bond. And the next Bond will have his own mix. I really kind of wish, honestly, if it had been Idris Elba, we're probably getting a little too old for that. But my goodness, he would have been awesome. People are talking Tom Hardy now. I think that's interesting. He's a, little, he's a little bit smaller, honestly, in stature, but you put that man in a suit, start having to punch people and shoot people, I mean, I'm down. But I would prefer that we bring in a new, fresh-faced Bond. Like, maybe somebody a little under the radar, you know? English soap star or something that we don't really know worldwide. Just let that person own the character for four or five movies. That'd be awesome. Oh, Paloma, that side character, that little Cuban-American uh, agent? Oh, man. Give me ten films about her. She is the female John Wick. I will back that. Um, I had a great time with this movie. I actually got a little choked up at the end. I'm not going to lie. I was not expecting that in a Bond film. But to go through five movies and be on that journey with Daniel Craig's Bond, to have them win me over, um, despite the fact that I was that guy that was going like, okay, yeah, but it's not my Bond. Yeah, but it's still a Bond I can really appreciate. And just as an action film, I, they are phenomenal. I would give this film overall, I'm going high on this. I'm going eight and a half out of ten. For me... This is one of the better action films I've seen. And just the quality of the writing, the acting elevates it to a point where you could argue that, I know it's crazy, it's crazy. But take a look at the emotional spectrum Daniel Craig goes on in this movie. There's one scene in particular with Bloomfeld where um, he actually transitions from non-emotion to fake emotion to handling real emotion to the explosion. That is some Oscar 
worthy sheezy. And I, for one, would not hate an Oscar nod for Daniel Craig. One of my higher reviews so far on the channel, but well worth your money. Two hours, 45 minutes. Maybe you don't want to sit in a theater. I get it. But it was a tremendous uh, theater achievement. And I will be picking this up on 4K when it drops. Glad to have you back. Watch me rant and rave about silly things like men and guns. Be well, guys.